Hi, I'm Michael Gross, host of the B&O Railroad Museum Television Network. The first trains on American railroads were pulled by horses. Normal transportation by a horse-pulled wagon or stagecoach averaged a top speed of five miles per hour. But one horse pulling 30 tons on rails could average speeds of nine miles per hour. The B&O's Pioneer was one of the first railroad passenger cars produced in the United States. It carried the B&O directors during the railroad's inaugural run to Ellicott's Mills on May 22, 1830, making the B&O the nation's first common carrier railroad. In 1830, Richard Imlay, a Baltimore carriage maker, adapted his mail coach design for use with sets of wheels provided by the B&O. His first passenger car was named the Pioneer. The 15-foot car had two trucks, or axles, seated 15, and weighed two tons. In 1833, the B&O installed reversible seat backs so passengers would not have to ride backwards at such great speeds. By 1838, the double-track, or four-axle passenger car, was standard on all U.S. railroads. Later changes in passenger equipment were made by Ross Winans, chief engineer of the B&O. Wynan sold the B&O on the idea of having the car axles move with the wheels, with the axles rolling on bearings placed outside of the wheels. He was also one of several inventors who introduced four-wheel trucks for rail cars. In 1831, Wynans built the Columbus, an experimental car much longer than the Imlays, and placed them on two-wheel trucks. By the mid-1830s, such cars with a capacity of 36 to 40 passengers on seats along either side of a central aisle were standard on the B&O. During the 1870s, cars produced by the passenger car works measured about 51 feet long, 9 feet wide, and featured six-wheel trucks. Most had 54 seats, two stoves, and a water closet or restroom. Car interiors featured woods such as walnut, satinwood, and mahogany. The invention of the closed vestibule in 1887 allowed passengers to safely walk to different cars in the train, therefore encouraging railroads to provide more specialty cars and services. While en route to their destination, passengers could patronize dining cars, lounge and parlor cars, hair salons and barber shops, and even libraries. By the 20th century, riding on the railroad was like traveling in a luxury hotel on wheels. Passenger train travel reached its height between 1890 and the late 1920s. As the century wore on, the popularity of the passenger trains suffered a series of devastating blows. The Great Depression, the popular and affordable automobile, and the introduction of the airplane all contributed to the gradual decline of passenger revenues. Railfest Steam Days Weekend. Take a steam train ride behind the St. Elizabeth and watch a steam demonstration by the oldest operating steam engine in America, the William Mason. Join us for this weekend devoted to steam power as we let off a lot of steam. Or better still, just stop the train because I want to look around. The war came by train, commemorating the 150th anniversary of the railroad during the American Civil War. This is Michael Gross. Thanks for watching the B&O Railroad Museum Television Network.